highest level of concentration that you have and they take it all the time that you're working on them. I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. At times they even intimidate me to the point that I don't even want to work on them sometimes because <laughs> I just, unless I really feel on, like if I'm just kind of having an uh day, I literally won't work on them sometimes because going, the, you know, going backwards is not a good thing to do on those swords. You know, you can really oh, no. create a ton of work for yourself if you if you screw up on them. So, I mean, the subas are t uh, hammered on from the rear and JB welded on. So, if you nick or scratch one of those subas, it's not like you can just like the Japanese swords where you can just pull them off and replace it if you needed to. You know? Yeah, the suba off. is that this piece? Yeah, that's the that's the guard. Yeah. So when it's just the sword and without a handle on it, it's driven on from the handle side mm -hmm. and the steel actually tapers gradually. So we pound it on and it, it, and wedges. it wedges itself forward, exactly. Do you pre-stamp these or do you... Uh... No, nothing is, is stamped and nothing's pre-done. Really, this is, this is all done, um, you know, in place, I guess you'd, you would say. So all the forming of it and stuff. So, okay. and then we hammered on from the rear, and like I said, it tapers just gradually. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we drive it on with a steel pipe, fits over this, you know, mm -hmm. and I flip that around, put that down into wood, and, and I mean, wail on it. I mean, on the pipe? Yeah, on the pipe, exactly. Okay. And just because it drive it on, force it on with JB Weld. Once it's fit, and I know it's gonna fit the last time we put it on, um, is with JB Weld. JB Weld, mm -hmm. gotcha. And how long does a sword approximately take like this to, to make about how many um, hours? Like I said, it's hard to say because, you know, we're doing batches. Um, if I was doing just one sword, um, I'm guessing I could probably make one in maybe 10 days, something like that. You know, and it's weird because the exact same sword could take me 10 days and then the next time it could take me half that. It's just how smooth they run, you know. Gotcha. If they don't create a whole lot of problems and, and they just, you know, Want to want to get along, then then they can run very smooth. But you know, there's times that they can really slow you down. Gotcha. Um, and when you say ten days, is that like eight hour days, twelve hour days? Just I, depends. I start at five thirty in the morning and work till late, 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 late at night. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the only bonus is it's a labor of love, you know. So I don't really keep track of my time. But literally, we, I, I yeah, I'm up at five o'clock and work till after midnight every night so gotcha <laughs> wow um, now uh sheets let's talk about sheets mm -hmm. say, um, it. say it on swords there say is say is mm -hmm. how long um and what's the build on that like how, um, how is it made sometimes these can take like on some of the knives they can take as long as the knife to make the sheath it's uh wow. because of the way we make them they're they're labor intensive again um Thanks to Dad. <laughs> if there was a hard way to do something, he liked to go that route. Gotcha. Just because it 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 was always better and is always better, the way you know he's designed stuff. It's just they are super labor intensive. Um, we make a whole sheath inside a sheath. It's a full metal lined sheath, so they're metal lined and leather covered. Okay. Um, but it's a full metal lined sheath, and the, like on a Western style blade. <clears throat> This is the way they're done. This is the type of, you know, that metal. It's just, you know, and it's pre-drilled for the rivets. And then I'll actually put um, a contact cement on this and then whatever type of leather. A lot of our clients hunt all over the world, so they'll bring, uh, you know, their hides home. And then it's legal for me to work on that person's, like I can use elephant in here, but I can't just use it for anybody. I can only use it for the, the guy that paid for his tags, went and hunt the elephant, and it has it's almost a chain of custody type thing. Oh, gotcha. And so I can make his stuff out of that elephant for him. That is very Legally. cool. Yeah. Um, so, it's, you know, that's I usually use different types of exotic hides for our leather, and um, like I said, for the Zaid, this is the type of sheath with rivets, but on the Japanese type stuff, all of our sheaths are um, this same metal is used, but we roll it over and over and over mm -hmm. and use contact cement and so it creates a well it creates this you can see that it doesn't have the clip or that kind of thing but on a Japanese sheath see down inside there see that metal yes so it's it's just you know rolled over and over and over okay. and then with contact cement it's uh, it makes a solid a solid sheath 
and then we put the whatever type of leather over that. Gotcha. And I'm assuming that you use the, the metal um, in, inner sheath to protect from the leather being cut by the sword going in and out. Oh yeah, the these would go right through the right through the say if, if it was just leather alone, you know, yeah, they would cut right through it, so. Gotcha. Yeah, it's um, it's actually, it's three layers on one side and um, four on the other is what it is, what it ends up being. Um, gotcha. And so that, they won't cut through unless you actually tried to cut through it, but just sliding in and out, that works, you know, they work really well that way, so. Gotcha. Oh yeah, smooth, mm -hmm. like butter. Yep. And then they're really meant, the tightness that, we can tighten them to any tightness, but they're meant to where when you bow, they will come, it'll, it'll be free running. That's really the way my dad and I like to set them up. Okay, it's very cool. Once you bow, they're, they're coming out on their own, and then it's and then it's on. And would you mind talking about your uh, the handle? How, yeah. How the, is it resin? It's, handle? It is cotton cord. Um, well, it, there's a variety of different handles we use, um, but the basic handle is it's a cotton cord over wrap, and then it is uh, resin soaked, two part epoxy resin soaked, um, and then it's yeah they're just you can't you can't hardly harm them. I mean we've tested them in all different types of conditions, and you really can't can't hurt these handles at all once they're soaked like that. Um, but we'll use um, gray skin and a bunch of different stuff underneath the cord. You know, we all different types of products. This is actually this red one is actually another cotton cord that's been wrapped under this black wrap, and okay. uh, and then it's just been you know dipped in in a red resin. So. so I'm assuming that you do it in stages. You would do the red first, dip it, and then you go on with the next cord. And, yeah, and, and dip that's it. exactly right. It has to completely dry in between those in, you know stages. But okay. um, but like if we use um, s some of the other products, we don't have to do that. We can just instantly overwrap it with this and so it's okay. a Then I also noticed that some uh, some swords have uh, some type of uh, item wrapped inside. Yeah, it's called a Manuki. Oh, that's Manuki. what it, it's actually called and it's uh, considered a, like a good luck talisman type thing. Um, mm -hmm. the, back in the old days the um, samurai would just, they would wrap something in their handles that either was good luck to them or you know was a family heirloom, that type of thing you know. Okay. Something that meant something personal. Gotcha. Them and they would wrap that in the handles. Yeah, I know there was a gentleman that had a sword made by, I don't know if it was you or your dad, but he had a, uh, a dragonfly mm -hmm. inside of it. I've done, I've done some like that. My dad has done some like that. We've done, I mean, everything you can imagine. We've done dolphins and just, yeah, everything you can imagine we've wrapped into these. Really, it's the size that determines, you know, how they can be, how they can be used and stuff. Some of the smaller knives, you know, um, guys want us to wrap these big, Big things in, and we, you know, we can only wrap smaller items into some of the kozakas and stuff. But gotcha. And then a lot of times these swords, our katanas will have another. Uh, it's usually a kozaka right here in the sheath, and then we'll cut a hole in the in the suba, which is the guard, mm -hmm. and you can actually draw that out. The old samurai liked that too because um, when they were in a restaurant eating, they could draw that out and eat with it and, and use it utility. And um, you know, in those days, if they if they drew their katana, they had to draw blood with it before they put it back. That's oh, true. Wow. Yeah. So, so this way they could have a utility knife with them, and uh, you know, not have to draw either their own blood or somebody else's blood with their sword. So. <laughs> gotcha. You know. And then uh, the the I don't want to call it string, but the um, it's, rope that's hanging. It's part of the cotton cord that's. That's the same cotton cord that the handle is, and it's just a little bit of it is wrapped on the on the seya or sheath, and then we leave these two longer pieces so we can tie the sword gotcha. into itself. Or when it's on your person, you can tie it, sash this to your to your, your belt. loops or okay. belt. Yep, exactly. That's what that is. That's what that is for. So, oh, cool. So, yeah. Put that one back for you.